Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you a video again from uh, Jerusalem, I guess the world's only capital city where Hebrew is the official language. Um, I want to do another video today regarding this uh, grisly business of learning Hebrew that everyone uh, who moves to Israel, unless you come here with perfect Hebrew, but uh, if like me, you were born in a uh, random town in the great backwaters of, uh, of Western Europe and Ireland, uh, you're kind of coming at it from a much more basic level and for me personally it's a kind of ongoing process one thing I would say about Hebrew I'm going to try not veer too far off topic on this video is that it's a I think personally it's a deceptively hard language by which I mean if you compare Hebrew to close Semitic languages modern Hebrew I'm talking about here such as Arabic Arabic has in just in the alphabet three forms initial medial final you say ah oh, hebrew is a cinch uh less uh diff less uh, phonomes or sounds in the language to grapple with um but the more you get into it you realize there's a lot of meat in hebrew there's an awful lot of uh, of learning and it is a quite a difficult language um i think there's an official grouping of languages according to difficulty and you have like the Romance languages, which are those stemming from uh, Latin, like French and Spanish, which as anyone who studied them in school knows, if you know one, there's a good amount of crossover to the others. Then you have this Chinese and Scandinavian really at the top. But Hebrew and the Semitic languages like Arabic and Amoraic are quite far up there in the scale of difficulty. So uh, yeah, you have to sometimes give yourself a bit of a... Uh, forgiveness because i've been here in israel for seven years and i'm to be honest ashamed of my hebrew and i periodically hit myself on the head and say no you have to you have to do more and uh you know you just look around at the anglo bubble and you say do i really want to be hanging around to see these people for the rest of my life uh that was a joke but um it is definitely a key skill in alia uh learning hebrew and I've been uploading recently to YouTube uh, some of the resources that are out there. Um, I think personally learning a language through the means of television and songs is amazing way to learn it. You can if you can track down the lyrics of uh, popular songs in Hebrew or even older songs. I used to do this for Spanish. I would listen to the Spanish chart music, print out the letras de canciones, the uh, lyrics and translate words I didn't know. And you're probably you're probably gonna be, you know, biased towards colloquial language um, and same thing for television versus formal language, but it is a really effective way to learn because once you do that translation work, you can listen to music at the gym and you're actually revising vocab without even realizing it. So it's an amazingly effective. Anyway, um, another resource I wanna talk about is Morphix and here is Morphix. Now, for those who haven't yet uh, become acquainted with the strange paradox of Israeli internet websites, they all looked like they were built in the 1990s by a high school student uh, doing a favor for his dad. And they all cram as much pixel banner advertising that, that also tends to have this kind of very 90s look as there is room for. So it's a little bit heavy, but don't be detracted. You just need to make liberal use of the X button. We got rid of the kid now they're trying to sell us a hotel and aliexpress products but uh anyway this is morphix and the url is morphix.co.il now the thing about hebrew and if you're watching this video you probably know this is that in israel the standard is not to write hebrew with vowels now the problem google translate's a terrific resource i did a video a few months ago about how google translate finally got around to adding TTS text-to-speech voice synthesization in other words you can put in something in English get the Hebrew and then the voice will speak now the reason that was such a big deal is because Google Translate to give an example doesn't give you the vowelization so there's no way to know just from the letters if it's an a or an o or an u etc now that was where Morphix was always very useful because it's a uh, dictionary website and if you type in something in English it will give you the word in Hebrew um, and it's also another good use for Morphix if you are a more advanced learner is that it also does Morphix by the way seems to be they're mainly focused now 
on uh, selling, uh, teaching English for Israelis. So the Hebrew to English lookup is particularly good on this uh, website. So let's just kind of, sh I want to show you guys a couple of things about it. Now Morphix is a website and it's also a phone app. I have it on my Android device. I also pay Morphix to store words, uh, but they're still trying to sell me in all sorts of random, it's like upselling central. So anyway, uh, you, you, th there is that functionality to save words um, to a lookup list. And this is really useful if you're more sort of intermediate in a language is you, the amount of words that are new to you is going to hopefully be getting smaller over time. And with Morphix, it does allow you to create different lists. So I might have a list for medical words or animals or colors. And you can do all that good stuff and put your words, save them on the phone and they'll appear on the desktop and vice versa. So that's always a nice little functionality. But let me just show you the basics uh, in this video. So if I want to look up a word, let's say goat. Sorry, I'm in English. I'm in Hebrew, I mean. G-O-A-T. How do we say goat in Hebrew? And we get A's, but you may notice as long, al alongside this lovely picture of a goat, uh, A's, they're giving us the vowels. So there's no uh, confusion here about how to pronounce that. Um, you also get English uh, TTS. There isn't text-to-speech on the other way in Hebrew. Now, um, something, it's very basic. Sometimes it does give you a few different uh, words uh, for instance, or usages, but um, it's more useful for Hebrew speakers learning English. Like it gives you examples of that word in English, uh, but it won't it won't go from A's. But let's just look, let's just do it the other way, and let's just stick with goat. Now, one uh, cool thing, um, one thing I actually really do recommend now. After eight years in Israel, my Hebrew is not only exemplary; it's poor. But one thing I did get ahead of the game on is learning to type in Hebrew. I learned to type pretty early. Um, but if you're just starting Hebrew, and I highly, highly recommend that. It's something they never, everyone overlooks in Ulpan. When I went to Ulpan in 2015, no one was teaching us how to type in Hebrew. So I learned myself. You just need to learn where the letters are. And it's, after that, you can just do a touch typing program. Um, so the, the point I was, I was leading up to here is that even if you don't yet know how to type in Hebrew, you can click on the keyboard symbol and it will give you a virtual keyboard so you can uh, use that. Now, just one thing here, um, you don't actually need this. Most operating systems have a virtual keyboard functionality. So you don't, if, if you are just learning to type in Hebrew now, um, you, you can use it throughout other applications, not just Morphix, just as an FYI. Uh, so let, let's just do one in the other direction. I'm gonna just uh, use my actual keyboard here rather than the virtual one. And let's type A's for goat. And we see the translation in English, A's goat. Um, and it, it gives you some sort of grammatical info here. For instance, next to is, uh, next to, next to A's. So, yeah, it's very good uh, system here. So I really think that's the main thing in uh, Morphix. Uh, let's just do a couple more uh, examples, random words. Dancing, click on uh, Targum, translate here. And we get the uh, verb and it's three letter root here. Uh, so there is, uh, is that. So Morphix is definitely one of the useful tools in the toolbox of Hebrew, modern Hebrew resources. One I would write, one that I find very useful as well, and I'll do another video about this, is Hebrew to Hebrew dictionary. So just simply Hebrew lookups, because as you can see from Morphix, you do get the vowelization, but you don't get, you know, what you'd expect in a well-rounded dictionary with kind of um, descriptions of different usages for that word. Uh, example sentences, that sort of thing. If I were to run A's through a Hebrew, Hebrew, uh, if, uh, Milon Ivri Ivri, I would get that. So that's another useful thing to have as well. Now that Google Translate um, also does uh, text to speech, it's less, It's I find myself using it yes, less, um, but it does have some nice gamification options like saving your list of words, and then you can also do a quizzes. So you can save a vocab list and quizzes. So there's still a couple of reasons to use it. 
The final one I really want to do a video about, which I will get around to eventually, is uh, websites for declining verbs. In Hebrew, you can put a three letter verb root and it'll give you the very, it'll decline the verb uh, for you, which is also something very, very useful to know how to do. Uh, I hope this video has been useful. If you are learning modern Hebrew, uh, this is what Morphix is. If you've heard about it from your teacher, your friends, etc. Morphix.co.il, also available as an application. And finally, uh, you're going to get a lot of advertisements telling you to do this, but it is worth, in my opinion, spending a bit of money on it in order to uh, increase the amount of uh, saved vocabulary you can keep in the system. Because if you're looking to give yourself tests uh, to make sure that you've learned this new vocab, uh, this is definitely a uh, this is definitely a good way to uh, improve your retention and learning. Thank you guys for watching more videos uh, about Hebrew and various topics coming soon to this YouTube channel.